Dear colleagues and viewers, a warm welcome to you as we walk through the virtual exhibition Unearthing Memories of Civilization, Curation as Archaeology, presented by the Kiranatha Museum of Art. This exhibition is facilitative both in excavating ideas around curation as well as the museum space as an adaptable site, one which allows new imaginings and configurations each time art objects and ideas around them are interpreted and visualized. It opens a space to rethink the historic and the contemporary, the past and the present, dealing not only with diverse artworks from the collection but also addressing newer approaches, methods and display strategies, drawing attention to museum ecologies. This exhibition attempts to explore two expansive ideas, curation and archaeology as two complementary metaphors that help understand one in the light of the other. The selected artworks of intergenerational artists unfold facets of the archaeological and the anthropological, the historical and the mythical by opening up multiple narratives reflecting upon culture and tradition. Responding to the rich and layered cultural heritage of Bihar, a region where the ruins of history coexist with living traditions, KNMA offers this specially focused cross section from its steadily growing art collection. One can imagine an archaeological excavation encountering one of Himmat Shah's terracotta heads at the entrance. As you walk into KNMA, the central hall area suddenly leads you into Ellen Tallur's monumental terracotta installation, Veni Vidi Vici. I came, I saw, I conquered. The work is titled after a Latin phrase that refers to a rapid and confident victory. Being a student of museology, Tallu refers to a past that shows an outlandish confluence in Indian colonial history. A story of a two-century-old venture by Christian missionaries from Basel who opened a tile factory at Mangalore in Karnataka, the place where Talur was raised and continues to live. The factory, which initially aspired betterment for the locals, was eventually taken over by the British after World War to be renamed as Commonwealth Tile Factory. The Victorian Albert Museum in Bombay has been displaying terracotta figurines of Hatha Yogi or ascetics as an imperial scrutiny over local ethnography. Talur draws from these incidents and appropriates a title which refers back to an early history of colonization, recalling representation of localized values and culture practice as objects for museum display. A turn to the left and we find the presence of monolith forms in a cave-like shrine. Himmat Shah's sculptural heads in terracotta with their vulnerable fissures and textures are a witness to the passing of time. Himmat was drawn to materials extracted from the body of the earth, especially to the aroma and sensuousness of terracotta, its response to body temperature and the artist's touch. His innovative techniques and creative desire radicalized this ancient craft medium, giving it a contemporary edge. Working with the natural color of the medium, he sometimes glazed them or covered them with silver or gold leaf. Himmat explored innumerable textural possibilities in the accidental fractures, abstracted contours, transmuted cracks, holes and indents. The recurrent head form recalls an iconic presence, a ritual symbol or an ancestral memory. For Himmat, it evokes the Tirtankara, a meditative image, elevating the spiritual in material. For Himmat, art is nothing less than an act of faith that transforms something inside you forever. This mysterious iconicity continues along the path to stop at Jairam Patel's burnt wood and black and white works. The spirit behind the paintings of Jairam is essentially a lone spirit. What he manifests is mysterious, ambiguous, unresolved and primal with an emphasis on the use of black. 
He wrote, Black has always fascinated me. It seems that black in itself carries many things no one knows, deposited by whom and when. His large paintings in black and white that are his later works appear as dancing shadows, overlapping dismembered body fragments or different bodies composed together. From the bodies, life force and heroic gestures of digging matter, Jairam gradually moved towards forms that are liberated from the materiality of the body to transfigure into black mass or perhaps future apparitions. In a modernist vein, he went on to innovatively use a blowtorch to burn plywood sheets stuck together and arrived at a charred image blurring notions of inside and the outside, destroying any definite meanings all at once. These burned wood reliefs exuded a haunted quality, strangely calm yet ominous, disturbing yet appealing, threatening yet thrilling. The viewer of Ghulam Muhammad Sheikh's Coward series encounters a strange departure from the preconceived notions of installation art or indigenous folk structures. Instead, it reflects a complex retelling of relevant social issues. The work stands on a liminal pedestal supporting a formalistic style with experiences, myths and stories. Coward's inspiration is attributed to the travelling medieval shrines of Kavadiya Bhats from Rajasthan. These bards and genealogists carry these objects from place to place reciting songs in praise of deities. These modest sized portable structures and paintings both refer to social and existential questions alluding to the crisis in secular values and escalation of violence in India. This gallery, with modest, intricate sculptures by Meera Mukherjee, speaks of the simplicity and everyday innovativeness. Meera emerged as a young sculptor, honing her skill under the guidance of Tony Stadler in Germany. However, she felt a deep resonance with the Cyperdew or the Lost Wax Method as well as Dokra sculpture making, a technique she learned at Bastar, Madhya Pradesh from the local community of Gerua Bell Metal Makers. This training empowered her with a certain sensibility towards casting the quintessence of community spirit brimming in bronze sculpture such as people in a row, retaining the magic of every day as well as the exuberant celebration of some happy event. While a work like Shristi acknowledges and enshrines the indigenous knowledge systems coexisting in natural ecosystems, Works like Dharma Puja and untitled The Storms reveal her narration of common episodes from rural life. The sculptures exude a pre-expressive performative warmth, eluding the illusion of stillness cast in time. A. Ramachandran's fascination with sculpture making dates back to his childhood when he would unleash his creativity by moulding figures out of clay. His unique sculptural language is shaped by his interest in Indian classical art, past sculptural traditions and lush nature in Kerala. Composed in bronze and steel, Ramachandran's The Genesis of Kurukshetra War, Kunti and Gandhari 2005 reinterprets the dice game from the epic of Mahabharata. As the title suggests, the work revisits the origin of the Great War through a contemporary feminist perspective. Seated on the opposite ends are the ornamented figures of Kunti and Gandhari playing the vicious game of dice, deciding the fate of their sons, the Pandavas and the Kauravas who are helplessly trapped in fetal positions occupying the surface of the checkered board. Arpita Singh is a storyteller. Her love for literature and mythology grew early on in her formative years. She treasured the patterns and details of the Valmiki Ramayana, often doodling on it. Characters and events from mythologies appear placed next to each other with present-day occurrences of atrocities in her subject matter. 
epics like the Mahabharata and the Ramayana become fertile ground to investigate or comprehend complexities of human behavior and recurring pattern of wars and troubled histories in works such as Whatever is Here and Golden Deer. Searching Sita through torn papers. Another work from the exhibits is perhaps the only one in which Arpita has taken to painting evil characters performing heinous crimes. These grotesque predators hiding in black shroud to grab, leap, abduct and strangle female victims like vultures devouring their prey. Over a monumental format, this four-part canvas escalates the plight of girls and women facing atrocities of this city. A visual festivity that invokes aspects of traditional art forms, folklore and mythological elements mark the distinctive oeuvre of Madhvi Parikh. Stylistically characterized by an awkward merging of folk elements and contemporary appearances, the self-taught artist often draws inspiration from the geographical and cultural landscapes of rural Saurashtra, her place of birth. Composite forms in floating figures, enlarged heads and anthropomorphic compositions, eccentric faunal and floral forms rendered in a multi-hued palette occupy her fantastical world. What is obvious here is Parekh's preoccupation with mythology, tales from her childhood, existing value systems and rituals that are portrayed in a highly individual expression. One comes across the long history of violence entangled with the origin of civilization in the terracotta work by K.G. Subramanian, Anatomy Lessons. An exponent of the living traditions, Subramanian makes the unsettling observation of learning the human anatomy from dismembered bodies found on the streets. Each panel of this terracotta relief is divided into nine squares, with anatomical fragments, severed hands, feet, torso and heads mutilated in a jigsaw. Terracotta, the key civilizational remnant stumbled upon during their archaeological excavation, is no longer presented here as an index to any living tradition, but as the ground for dissecting dismembered identities. Almost like a documented record of his identity, these boxes by Rajendra Tiku when flung open, provide a perspective into the myriad aspects of desire for a home. A habitat of tales, songs, aromas, textures and of love that is long gone. Tiku carefully assembles small cast objects and materials as responses to his quest for healing a fragmented past, reclaimed by overcoming the ephemerality of remembrances. Poetic and poignant, retrieved and recharged. These modest size works of Rajendra Tiku allude to the fragility of existence, the uncertainty of the everyday. A survivor of the forced exodus from his hometown, Kashmir, migration and journeying through the terrain of troubled memories are a recurring theme in Tiku's work. Shalina S. Vichitra's artistic formulations reflect an inclusive approach towards imagining topographies beyond their geopolitics. They speak of the depleting nature of consumerist cultures and subsequent coercions posed to ethnicities. A Thousand White Flags, an installation that includes black and white photographs of prayer flags fluttering in desolate heights of mountains along with white and translucent fabric flags with suggestive motifs installed like votive objects, recall the resilient spirit of Tibetan Buddhist exiles. Searching for a fitting phrase of chronicling the Tibetan resistance against Chinese occupancy, it exudes artistic simplicity in resonance with the philosophy of Buddhism. It allows one to imagine the flags blowing and prayers carried by wind indiscriminately reaching every living being on the path. Bringing back the memory of exile and the path of resolution, one based on the ethic of non-violence, the installation excavates thoughts from a long history of mercifulness that has sustained humanity. <laughs> 